Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley. Today we are talking about a couple of ways that you can upgrade your new Draconic Rage Precon deck from the new set, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. This deck features Vrondis, Rage of Ancients, and it has a ton of huge, fun dragons that you can use to smash your opponents. Vrondis, Rage of Ancients, costs three, a red, and a green for a 5-4 legendary creature, Dragon Barbarian. He has an Enrage ability that says, whenever Vrondis is dealt damage, you may create a 5-4 red and green Dragon Spirit creature token with when this creature deals damage, sacrifice it. And it also says, whenever you roll one or more dice, you may have Vronda steal one damage to itself. So obviously to go along with the Dungeons and Dragons theme of this new set, you've got the ability to deal a damage and activate his Enrage ability anytime you roll a die. So there are going to be lots of dragons in this deck and there are also going to be some cards that cause you to roll dice. The tough thing about upgrading this deck for me was that there are kind of two focuses um, in the deck and that is trying to activate Brondus and get as as many dragon spirit tokens as possible and to abuse those coming into the battlefield multiple times and it's also just a dragon tribal deck which is really really fun many players really enjoy tribal decks so I kind of took a little bit different approach with this deck normally I like to with the pre-cons almost completely cut out other strategies and just focus on one strategy when upgrading that deck but uh the biggest issue that i noticed with this deck is and the very first thing that i wanted to do was cut a lot of the high drops so unfortunately a lot of the slots that i'm going to use to upgrade certain cards a lot of those are going to go towards ramp which is kind of unfun i think so also towards the end, I will be talking about another possible package that you can use as I am trying to keep this a budget. So the main portion of this video is going to be me talking about 11 cards that I have cut from the deck and another 11 cards that I'm going to add to the deck that are 20 or less dollars. They're, they're, it's going to be right around $20, which I think is a really good spot for most new players or just anybody that's already spent a bunch of money on the new set and just wants to do an inexpensive upgrade to this deck. This deck needs a little bit of help in the ramp department in my opinion so a lot of the slots are going to be dedicated to that. So let's dive into it. First let's talk about the 11 cards that I've taken out. I have taken out one forest. It's the only land we're taking out. I think that this deck needs to be at 38 lands. It comes with 39, so definitely do not drop below 38 lands. There are a lot of big fat dragons in this deck that cost 6, 7, and even 8 mana. But we are actually going to cut that 8 mana drop, and that is Bogarden Hellkite. I just, the very first thing I wanted to do with this deck was cut all of the high drops. The, I know that's kind of the point of having these big dragons, but. 8 mana is just a little bit too much, I feel like, for this effect. You might disagree, and that that's fine. Go ahead and keep him in if you want to, and let me know in the comments section how many games you win with him. Yeah, I mean, he is definitely a cool dragon, but 8 mana is a little bit too much. And along those same lines, I immediately cut Decree of Savagery. I don't think that we really want a 9-drop instant to add counters in this deck even though we can go we can cycle it i just don't think that that is a good card for this deck it's going to sit around in your hand for way too many turns especially if you get it early other cards i've decided to cut are explore i've never been a big fan of explore maybe it's worked better for you i've just i would just rather play an actual mana rock or cultivate which is already in the deck but like i said i'm just not a big fan of explore neverwinter hydra is also getting cut i would really hate to pay four mana for a one one trample with ward four <laughs> which can happen um not a big fan of how unlucky you can be just because i'm not a fan of how bad this can be just because you get unlucky with a die roll I have also cut Sword of Hours, Component Pouch, 
Tareen Mahler, Chameleon Colossus, Indomitable Might, and Earth Cult Elemental. I don't really want to keep diving into why I've cut certain cards. Um, if you do have questions or comments on why some of these other cards have been cut, go ahead and leave those comments down below and we will respond to them. But let's go ahead and dive into the cards that I actually am adding. And the first thing that we talked about was ramp. This deck sorely needs more ramp, so we'll start with Farseek, which is a sorcery that allows you to search for, in this deck, a mountain, and then put it onto the battlefield tap. Uh, we've also gone ahead and added Orb of Dragonkind. It's a new card. It is an artifact that costs one and a red. You can pay one, tap it to add two mana in any combination of colors, but you can only spend this mana to cast dragon spells or activate abilities of dragons. So if you find yourself taking out a lot of dragons to focus on Vrondis a little bit more, which is a package that we'll talk about at the end of these actual cuts and adds that I've made for the budget version of this upgrade. If you find yourself cutting a lot of dragons, then you'll want to take this out as well, but with the amount of dragons, this, this card is probably actually going to be really good. I actually really like it, especially because it also has another ability that for a red and tap it, you sacrifice it, then look at the top seven cards of your library, and you can reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. Then you put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library. So when this isn't helping you cast dragons, you can use it to go find more dragons. So I really like this card and I think that it will fit well in this deck. Talisman of Impulse costs two and can tap for a colorless or a red or green, but it deals you damage. This is one of the more affordable talismans and definitely a better option than explore in my opinion. We've also got Kodama's Reach, which is a sorcery for two and a green, which allows you to search for two basics. You put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. And then the last card in our ramp package is Sky Shroud Claim. For three and a green, you can search for up to two forest cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then you shuffle your library. So I've been cutting Sky Shroud Claim from a lot of my decks that I've been trying to make a little bit quicker, but I think that's, that it will actually do a really good job in this deck because of all of those huge dragons. So that ends our little ramp package that we've added in. The deck did come with quite a lot of ramp, but many of those cards are on big dragons. So if it takes too long to get to those dragons that are supposedly going to ramp you, then it's almost as if this deck really only has half of the required ramp for it to work. Now, some of the more fun cards that we've added include Minion of the Mighty from the new set as well. It costs one red for a zero one cobalt creature. It has Menace and Pack Tactics. And Pack Tactics says, whenever Minion of the Mighty attacks, if you attacked with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, you may put a dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. You're definitely gonna be able to attack with power six or more in this deck. It's not gonna be that hard. It's just fine. The trick with Minion of the Mighty is just finding where to send him. There's a good chance that after he swings for the very first time and activates this, that he's going to die. But it's okay because you're paying one red for a huge dragon from your hand, basically, if he does die. And if he lives, then you can keep doing it over and over again which is awesome. I really like this card for this deck. The next card I've added is Elemental Bond. It's an enchantment for two and a green that says whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. We want to draw cards, so Elemental Bond is going to help us draw cards, especially when we are rolling dice and activating Vrondis and getting creatures for cheap over and over again, multiple times a turn. So this is gonna be a fantastic card in the deck. Next, we've got Chaos Channeler from the new set. He costs two and two red for a four, three human shaman. He has the ability Wild Magic Surge. That's just a flavor ability, but it says whenever he attacks, you roll a d20. Then if you get one through nine, you exile the top card of your library and you can play it this turn. If you get a 10 through 19, you exile the top two cards of your library and you may play them this turn. And if you get a 20, if you get a critical hit, 
then you exile the top three cards of your library and you may play them this turn. So when you activate this ability by attacking, not only are you going to get more cards to play from the top of your deck, you're also going to trigger Vrondis. Another really good card that rolls dice from the new set is Delina, Wild Mage. And if you've been playing standard at all, you will know that she is a beast and she's going to be really awesome in this deck as well. She costs three and a red for a three, two legendary creature elf shaman. Whenever Delina attacks, you choose target creature you control then roll a d20. If you hit a 1 through 14, you create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it has exile this creature at the end of combat. And if you hit 15 through 20, you create one of those tokens and roll again. Delina is absolutely nuts when combined with Vrondis. Trust me, run this card, she's going to be an absolute powerhouse. Especially when you're going to get multiple copies of Rondus from her because you have a super lucky turn and you're triggering Rondus over and over again. It's, she's awesome. She's, she's gonna be out of control. Another creature I've added from the new set is Hoarding Ogre. For three and a red, you get a three, three ogre that whenever it attacks, you roll a d20. If you get a one through nine, you create one treasure token. This is a fantastic four drop that's going to help us ramp into some of those bigger dragons at the top end of our curve. The last of the 11 cards that I've added to this budget upgrade is the most expensive of the cards that I've added, and that is Pyrohemia. It costs two and two red. It's an enchantment that says at the beginning of the end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, sacrifice Pyrohemia. But you can pay a red and it deals one damage to each creature and each player. This is a super good and easy way to hit Vrondis one to three times in a turn to make one to three, five, four red and green dragon spirit creature tokens. Not only that, it's also going to wipe the board of pesky utility creatures that your opponents have. Pyrohemia is absolutely awesome. The only downside is if somebody plays a Wrath of God, you're also gonna lose Pyrohemia, but you're going to benefit more from this than you are going to waste it, I guarantee it. All right, you've made it to the extras portion of this video where I'm going to talk about a strategy that I think is probably the best and most fun way to run Vrondis, but it's quite a bit more expensive than the upgrade guide that we just went over. So a lot of these cards are probably cards that maybe you expected to see um, in the upgrade guide, but if we're going to build it this way, it's not going to be budget. So I just wanted to go over a few cards real quick. And if I were to build this deck, which I haven't, um, I will have the list for the budget upgrade, but I don't have a list for this deck. I just wanted to quickly go through a few cards that I would put in um, for a package like this. This is going to focus a lot more on triggering Vrondis, and it's also going to include more cards like Warstorm Surge. Warstorm Surge is already in the deck. It's already in the pre-con but we're going to include cards like Impact Tremors and Perforos, God of the Forge, Terror of the Peaks, and Where Ancients Tread, because we're going to be triggering Vrondis so many times and getting so many of these five fours entering the battlefield, cards like these are going to just completely annihilate our opponents so quickly. In this package, we're also going to be including cards like Prodigal Pyromancer that can tap to deal one damage to target creature or player and cards like Anara that will give our commander indestructible. The absolute best card in this strategy and that you are probably expecting in the upgrade guide is Blasting Station. And you can definitely put it in the budget upgrade if, if you wanna spend an extra $8 on it, whatever it is today. But Blasting Station is an artifact that costs three. You can tap it and sacrifice a creature to deal one damage to target creature or player. Then whenever a creature comes into play, you can untap Blasting Station. So if we have a card like Warstorm Surge out and we've given our commander indestructible with a card like Anara or Roar of Challenge or some sort of equipment, and then we've got Blasting Station, all you do is tap it, sacrifice a spirit that you've already made, deal one damage to Vrondis, then you make another spirit, 
That triggers your cards like Perforos, Terror of the Peaks, where Ancients tread. You hit your opponents in the face, then you sacrifice that creature, and you just keep looping this over and over again. It's a little bit convoluted as far as getting an infinite combo. It takes multiple cards. It's not like a two card combo or anything. And you don't necessarily have to just go for Blasting Station in this strategy because there are a lot of other good cards like Seedborn Muse for this strategy that will be untapping your stuff every single turn or Endbringer that you can activate on all of your opponent's turns. There are a lot of really good ways to deal one damage to Rondus, activate him, or do it multiple times per turn and then do it again on your opponent's turn or loop it like you would with Blasting Station. And I feel like this is probably going to be the funnest build for Rondus. And like I said, I didn't actually build the deck in preparation for this video, but I did want to mention these cards as this is probably what I'm going to do with my Rondus deck when I get it in a couple of months. <laughs> I'm actually going to wait. So anyway, um, I hope that this has been helpful for you. I really, really like Rondus. Um, even just out of the box, Rondus is really good. I did a few play tests, um, not on paper, but on Architect, and I just played the deck a few times, and it seems really, really fun. It It is quite slow compared to the other decks, but um, once you get those dragons out, it, it is a blast. So I hope that you have fun with however you choose to upgrade your Rondus deck. All right, you've made it to the end of the video. Please like this video and subscribe. Sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to support us directly, view exclusive content, join our exclusive Discord channels, and receive merch and tons of other sweet perks. You can also join our Discord for free and get access to our non-Patreon channels, and you can find the link for that in the description below.